Remy here for the Rodeo Plays and welcome back to some more Sword Art Online Hollow Realization. Last time we left off, we beat the final boss for the main game, but now we're moving on to the DLC. Starting off with the first one, which was actually an update for the game before any DLC actually came out for Warriors of the Sky. So I'll get into a little bit more of the game later on because things have changed, but yeah, I just started up the game and it was like, hey, do you want to load up Warrior of the Sky? And I was like, cool. Sword Art Origin, a brand new VR MMORPG built from the original Sword Art Online. It was here in SA Origin when we met Premier, a strange young NPC. Unlike other NPCs, her settings were mysteriously null. My friends and I decided to help Premier complete her quest, but soon discovered that Cardinal was adjusting, adjusting her purpose. Using Premier and her twin sister Tia, Cardinal attempted to realize Hollow's uh, uh Cardinal attempted to realize Ironcrad's creation myth. Once we learned that Ironcrad's creation would mean Ironground's destruction, we quickly gave up on Premier's quest. However, there was another player who had who had realized what was going on and wanted to see it succeed. Genesis. With Tia firmly under his influence, Ironcrad was reborn and the world faced total destruction. But Premier wished to save Ironground. But Premier wished to save Ironground, and with her help, we stopped Tia and Genesis from destroying SA from destroying SA Origin. I'm assuming that's Origin, not Sword Art Online, but okay. That was about a week ago. Things have settled down since then. So, a lot of players are heading to Ironcrad to check it out. Well, well, I'm not surprised. I wonder what it's like. Yuki, you were there temporarily. Hey, everyone. Oh, hey, Kitty Toe. Good tidings. Come here. Good to see you, too. Hey, did you hear the news? They found a whole new area in Ironcrad. Oh, yeah, that. I've heard about that, but I, have, I still haven't checked it out. Someone apparently stumbled across a teleporter that takes you to a different area of Minecraft that we found. I hear it goes somewhere around floor 15. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. So that's interesting. Uh, this is what happens when you don't read the cutscenes the first time you play this. So the way, uh, the way the map is set up for the DLC, it's like, it threw me off because it was always around Minecraft. So if you watch my Let's Play of the series, you know, Ironcrab was formed, you could go to Ironcrab. But, like, all the DLCs were all around Ironcrab, like, right underneath it. So I'm like, so do all of these take place underneath Ironcrab? But it's like, no, it all takes place within the castle. So, you know, that's pretty interesting. I didn't really peep that the first time I played it. It's supposed to be crazy hard. Even SAO's top players are having trouble with it. Knowing you, I figured you'd be up there by now. Actually, I was just on my way there. You plan on going alone? In other words, you wish to ditch us? Uh, well, when you put it like that... Hey Mary, you wanna go explore? You wanna go explore with all of us, right? Correct. Say less. Ah, there you are. Hey girls, what's up? You look really excited. Can you tell? I hope that's sarcasm because don't none of them look happy about shit. Silica looks worried, and Liz and Leafa just look like we are gonna fuck you up when we see you. We discovered something. We discovered something we really want to share with everyone. You guys know about the new area that they found at Ironcrad, right? Yeah, we were just talking about heading up there to check it out. Well, have you heard about the NPC? No. What NPC? I was just talking with a player. I was just talking with a player who's been exploring Ironcrad. She said her party ran into an NPC that was kind of standing around, aimlessly staring at them. 
something about this NPC seemed off, so they tried to talk to her. Instead of answering, she just walked away. Do you think she's a quest NPC? It's possible, but unlikely. It seems like there's no telling when or where she'll show up. Weird, right? But that's not the real reason we hurried over here to tell you guys about it. This NPC was supposedly a girl with white hair. A uh, girl with white hair? Wait, do you think it could be... Tia? Tia? If she's acting strangely... If she's acting strangely for an NPC, and, and she's got white hair, there's a strong possibility that it's her. The last time we saw her was an Ironcrad. Maybe I make a... May I, oh, actually, hey, may I make a request? You don't need to ask. You want to go look for Tia, right? Oh, that's Premier talking. Great! Nice to know I can get my character voices together. Yes, that is correct. Well, we were just talking about going to check out a new area. What do you say? What do you say we try to find this NPC? I say let's do it. If it really is Tia, I'm going to help Amir find her. Yeah, and I bet we all want to know what happened to Tia after all, after all, uh, after all that fuss, right? Well, that settles it. Let's message everyone and tell them to meet us in Icrad. I cried. We're gonna go find a mysterious NPC. Do 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 do. First things first. We should head to the teleporter. That we should head to the teleporter that will take us to a new area. The teleporter and teleport gate plaza links to Icrad. Let's yes. head there. Here we go. To Icrad. Okay, so let's talk about these changes. Uh, I think some of you guys may have seen it. Hold on. So everyone's level 80. Uh, I went back and I was like, you know what? Since we're going to do the DLC and I know I'm going to be under level for it, let's just get everybody to level 80. Basically, if you play in a new game and you leave the game and then come back into it, the game's going to ask you because of the DLC, hey, because of the DLC, a lot of the enemies are higher level. Would you like to jump? Would you like to jump your level in order to try to be in order to be on par with them? So yeah, uh, so that's interesting. Also, my skill set is glitched out because for some reason. So anyone who's played this game knows when you get one-handed mastery, you're then supposed to get celestial blades. I have yet to get fucking celestial blades for some reason after starting this over. So yeah, so yeah, that that's fun, but whatever maybe it'll pop up later on or maybe i'm just rocking one-handed this entire time uh hopefully not but anyways uh that's pretty much it uh the show uh we got the event list is long because like i said I, I literally went back and started started this over again um so yeah also later on we're more than likely not even in this episode but maybe next episode we'll start working on the uh or i'll bring up the uh the Sacrament Invasion, that's what it's called. But anyways, as of right now, uh, do I have to head to the teleport gate? Oh, okay, I got you. All right, I'm just gonna try to teleport, but that's not happening. All right, Par All right, so here's where new stuff starts coming in. Paradise tickets. Get paradise tickets to the Shady Merchant and the Teleport Gate Plaza in order to upgrade character's default equipment. So long story short, the guy in the, I'm just gonna make this really short. The guy in the in the teleport in the uh, the guy in the teleport gate plaza. So now you get these things instead of just also getting you know the gold piece that you trade with him for stuff. You can also give him paradise tickets. Give him 20 of those. You can select the person. And he'll give you back the starting gear, right? But the thing about your starting gear is it's all enhanced. So it's like it's like ten times better than your basic gear. Alright. Powerful monsters lurking in the stuff and the Stalvatos butchered the fuck out that word. And the Stalvatos ruins will occasionally drop these paradise tickets. Although upgraded equipment may look the same as a character's default equipment, it is far more powerful. Collect enough paradise tickets to try upgrading your character's equipment. How about I say anything else you want to throw out there? Okay. 
Um, so the new area, uh, I did start it up. And by start it up, I mean, I've been there to only like where you first go to when you go to like the new area. And the reason for that was because, um, there's a thing. So you can, so when you're playing through the story, you can bring it up and you can go there because there's something else added into it. There's like a there's like a lot of stuff added into this DLC, right? Leaves to teleport to Ironcrash. Yes. So Warrior of the Sky the free update it just added a new area and a lot of places to go. The DLC, on the other hand, added way more stuff into it that makes like so that way like when you unlock it. There's like a little quest that Austin and Liz bring up to you, like, hey, there's a goddess here, da 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 da, and A, B, and C, and one, two, three. Basically, hey, let's go uh, check this place out. That should be the teleporter that'll take us to Ironcrad. Oh, okay, hi, how are you? I think this monster is guarding the teleporter. Well, that just means it's gotta go down. So, let's get this fight started. Okay, see that. Oh yeah, also the sword I got, um, it's, the sword I got, it does, the bait, in order to get the base sword, you gotta go to the Temple of Prayers and get it, but I transformed it so much that it's like at its second to final yes. stage. Alright. Let's activate it in the warp here. All right. So yeah. And when I say second to last stage, like if I upgrade it one more time, like it's not upgrading no more. It's at its maximum. It's not going nowhere else. So yeah. That's fun. Yep. So, the way it's set up is pretty much everything's just broken the fuck up. <laughs> everything's just broken the fuck up. Like this. So, the reason it looks like this, if you haven't seen the series, it's literally because when Tia was trying to recreate Ironcrad, she never finished, and it's just broken up like this. Like, there's still bits and pieces of Ironcrad that's put together, but it's like, for the majority part, most of it is like just floating in the air. Wow, this is incredible. Look, you can see the ground peeking out through the gates and through the gaps in the clouds. It suddenly reminded me of where we are. Hindcred, the floating castle, and the site of the death game where we first met. I'm not really sure how I feel about this. I thought I never wanted to come back, but now that I'm here, I think I've kind of missed the place. Well, we did. Well, we did spend two years of. Well, we did spend two years here. Minecraft's just another reality for us, as real as the world. You're right. Hey, lovebirds, get away from the edge. You might slip and fall. The ground just cuts off. The ground just cuts off suddenly. There, maybe it's because Minecraft was never completed. From here, it looks like the floors above and below us are missing pieces. Do you think that would make it hard for us to complete our quest? That brings up something I'm, I've been wondering about. The admins didn't make Ironcrad, right? Then why is there even a quest here to begin with? Three words. The Cardinal System. SAO, ALO, and SA Origin were all built using, uh, using it as their core program. What? Wait, so... Oh my fucking god. So, wait. SEO, understandable. As the origin, okay. And ALO, 
all using the same program that Akihiko Kaiba, the man who literally created a fucking death game, that's whose system y'all want to use? I'm not a developer by any means, but I feel as though if someone had a reputation in the development industry for whatever development they did was known for fucking up shit, I don't feel as though other people would use their development project or their development system in their projects. You feel me? Just, just saying. It's like if somebody was a shit chef, you wouldn't go use their recipes in your restaurant. You feel me? It's like, it don't make sense. Same here. All right. Kondo has the ability to automatically generate quests appropriate for all sorts of settings and player levels. It has access to a massive database of information, so it could come up with a fun quest that devs could have never dreamed of. So I guess the Cardinal, I guess the Cardinal designed the quest. I guess the Cardinal designed this quest so that we can finish it, even with how damn giant crat is. Hmm, huh. this is really weird. We have grasslands and ruins behind us, and then the open skies are totally visible here. I never saw anything like this when I was flying around the ALO. Who, ca who cares about the Vista? Let's get this show on the road. I want to find that NPC. And remember, girls, there are monsters. The monsters here mean serious business. Come find me if you're in trouble. I think we'll be fine. We can all handle ourselves in a fight. Uh, I doubt that, but... Klein, this is Yuki, the same person who put Kirito on his ass. Remember Kirito? The guy who you don't even fucking stack up to. I don't think you want that smoke. <laughs> if anyone's in trouble, we'll all be here to help out, right? Yeah, we're friends. That's what friends do. I just got seriously blown off. Hey, Premier, you'll come to me for help, right? From here? Huh? Where'd you go? Well, Klein, she's checking out the Vista. You don't seem to care about. She's checking out the Vista you don't seem to care about. Incredible. Yeah, it's really beautiful, isn't it? The sky seems to go on forever. When I look down, this when I look down, the size and beauty of the world stuns me. I wonder if Tia stood here once too. Maybe. And if she hasn't, well we'll just have to come back and show her once we find her, right? A wise plan. Let it be so. Alright then, let's get back to questing. <laughs> yeah. I'm still on that shit with Klein. It's like, word? That's what you're saying? Hey Klein, here's Asuna. You remember, former vice commander for the Blood Oaths? For the Knights of the Blood Oaths? Oh yeah, here's Philia. You know, here's Liz. Okay, Liz Silica. 50-50. Okay. Oh, wait. Here's Philia. Hollow area. Where motherfuckers were just killing one another, right? <laughs> like, here's Leafa, does Kendo in real life. Like, it doesn't work. But, anyways, here we are. Alright? So, as you can see, a lot of the enemies here are already level 70s. Are in their 70s, as I should say. Now, there is one place I want to go before we even go anywhere else, and it's the whole reason. And it's like the whole reason uh, this came into the game early on. Alright. So, first of all, because. First of all, let me charge my SP up. Alright. Alright. So, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to Fairy Dance. If Fairy. Let me, let me say this. If you do the DLC for your own sake get fairy dance because there's a lot of places with some good treasure chests or if not good treasure chests then a lot of places that you may not be able to reach without that extra height from fairy dance which literally when you're in the midair just gives you it like grants you the ability to double jump and trust me when i say when you play the dlc you're gonna want the ability to double jump but anyways enough of that we're gonna come up here now the reason I came up here is because there's this goddess statue. And she introduces a new mechanic in the game. A new mechanic that we're actually going to be using pretty heavily. 
It shouldn't look like a piece of something that didn't quite form during Minecraft's creation. Yeah, it looks like the entire place just fell out of the sky. Let's head aside. <laughs> Welcome to my hollow temple, heroes. I am the goddess of this land, worshipped once long, long ago. However, I have lost the vast majority of my power in battle with a terrible beast. I have been waiting for heroes such as yourself to help me restore this land's lost power. However, I have little strength remaining in me. I can only assist you by offering trials to hone your skills. Please, I beg of you, lend me your strength. Mm. Wow, she's this area's goddess. I wonder what sort of quest she'll give us. Why well, wonder? Let's just ask. What do you think, Kitty-toe? I'm with Liz. Let's do this. Thank you, heroes. I shall now grant you the ability to fuse elements. So, new gameplay mechanic, the Enigma Order. So, with the first, deal, first DLC, I'm almost certain because it wasn't in Warrior Disguise initially. With the first DLC, came the Enigma Order. Now, what is the Enigma Order, you may be asking? To sum it up very, very swiftly, the Enigma, so you can come to the goddess and you can, as she said, you can do trials. Now, these trials can give you, if you, now, by doing the trials, you can, and completing them, you can unlock a vast majority of things, such as new sword skills, uh, new sword skills, weapons, uh, armor, I think, uh, things like that nature, right? So, that's pretty much, so in order to do this, what gets added to the world is these things called elements. Now, things like light element, dark element, uh, blood element, earth, fire, wind, water, air, heart, maybe, uh, I think I just said everything for Captain Planet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, things like that, like elements get added to the world that you can go around and find, right? So, you complete the trials, you collect the elements in order to move on to the next trial, Complete the entire trial, and you get rewarded with like, like I said, new sword skills, weapons, armor, things like that. And you can specifically choose which one you want to go after. You don't have to do them in any order. So yeah, Enigma Order has been added to the main menu. That's that blurred out piece that we couldn't use for the entirety of the game, for real. Hey guys, look at this. There's something new on the menu. Enigma orders are missions you must complete to fuse elements of a sort of ordinal catalog. I'm lost. Elements? Fusing? The power I've granted you allows you to see elements. Elements exist, elements exist in all places of all and all things. They are the root of creation. Ordinal, ordinal is the act of taking elements that lack the spark of life and fusing them together to give them that spark. So so, summary, an ordinal is a mission to fuse a bunch of elements together. Yeah, that sounds right, I think. But what does she mean by fuse? An enigma order is like a blueprint of life. Elements can be fused in many different ways. Each fusion, combi each fusion combination will create a varying properties of power. Each order has multiple paths that can be taken, and each grants different powers. I can now bestow upon you an enigma order. As a one-time bonus, select an Enigma Order. As a one-time bonus, select an Enigma Order. Enigma Orders reward you with Paragon weapons such and Mystic skills. Select an Enigma Order for and a Paragon weapon. So here we are. So first we select our Paragon weapon. What do we want? We want to. So you have Eternal Heart, which is a sword. By the way, you can see what weapon is what uh, just on the picture. So Eternal Heart is a sword. Nova Flash is a repair. Uh, Herald Arc, I think, is an axe? Almost certain. Uh, I don't know what the fuck this is. Code of Laws, I think it's a spear. Uh, Giga Seeker, which is a hammer. Ame no Makuru... Uh, uh, hold on. Ame no Murak Murakumo. Pretty sure I pronounced that shit wrong. It's obviously a katana. Uh, Valhalla's Fury. Don't know what you are. I don't know, for real. And... Bane acts as an axe, okay? So I got one of these wrong. All right, we ain't gonna talk about that. So I'm gonna go with, so I never actually beat, you know, completed this, but let's go with Eternal Heart. Oh, uh, you press triangle to select it, okay? Then you press circle. 
Select an Enigma order for a, mi for a Mystic skill. Asylum Stride, hone your... So, it's the same concept, you know. Asylum Strider is your one-handed. Shining Star is the Rapier. Uh, Scimitar, that's what it was. Uh, Dagger, that's what that is too. Can't believe I missed two. Uh, Earth, Bla Earth Blaze is your Mace. Uh, Raikal Kamui is the Katana. Glorious Rush is your two-handed. Infernal Wolf is the axe it looks like impulse crush is the spear tachyon inversion is dual wield and i'm getting tachyon inversion tachyon inversion is is just a skill i'm getting from here on out new enigma orders will be issued randomly as time passes know that the enigma order i gave you here is not the last i will give you others however with my weakened powers it will take some time to create them visit me now and again and i shall give you enigma orders i have created Heroes, please, use the power locked within the Enigma Order to banish the darkness plaguing these lands. I wish you luck, heroes. Fight with pride and bravery. So, Enigma Orders. I'm seriously confused. Summary Part 2. We complete missions, listen to the Enigma Order, fuse elements, get new powers. However, the powers we get change depending on how we fuse elements. There's also a lot of Enigma Orders. Thanks for the summary. And for the summary, so it's a series of trials and quests that will grant us new abilities. You know, so want to get everyone together to rock this quest? Let's do it. Enigma orders. Uh, this is pretty much just going over everything you need to know. Uh, personally, I feel as though the game did a shit job of explaining what it is, because in your head, it's like, oh, okay, you can just fuse random elements together and get your result. That's not the case. So, what it is is Enigma Order. So let's let's just go to Tachyon Inversion. So what you need is so it has a requirement. So for example, equip dual blades and hit a level 100, uh, level 100 plus enemy 500 times with a sword skill. You have to do that. Then the catalyst, which are the elements you need to get in order to fully unlock this part of the trial and move on to the next one is a fire element, a wind element, and a spirit element. Then you can move down to Ordinal of Grace, and then once you beat this, you can move on to Ordinal of Wings and Ordinal of Strife, and then when you beat Ordinal of Strife, you get Tachyon Aversion, which you still have to do, and then you can also get a skill point. All right, so like I said, they do a shit job of explaining it, honestly, and I still cannot get dual wielding. So, you know, that's cool but I kind of don't want to go back and have to go get dual wielding. All right, uh, we're not gonna do that. All right, so I don't even know where the fuck we are going. Take a stroll to the ruins, make your way to the heart of Iron Crack. Okay, we're gonna ignore the, take, make your way to the heart of Iron Crack and that's the final boss. Take a stroll through the ruins. Uh, in other words, where am I going? Cause just saying take a stroll don't mean shit to me. Oh yeah. So now we get into things like the little arena. Okay, I just forgot I had fairy dance on. All right, so let's make our way over here. So in this first area, it's obviously called Warrior of the Skies and it has a reason for being called that. Because in this area, there is a, there's like a plethora of arenas, like up there. So there's a good amount of arenas that you can go in and fight a boss and challenge them and it's pretty cool. Uh, would I recommend you doing this? I I would tell you to do this because for the reason being later on in the DLC, in the DLC, um, I think it's DLC 3 actually, but yeah later on in the DLC uh, there will be a point where there are certain rooms and areas you can't answer for treasure chest unless your rank is a certain number or higher and the way you get your rank up is by doing like these little gladiatory battles so yeah young swordsman what was that heed my words for i am arzak warrior of the Arz of the azura flame we the blue dragon order watch over this sacred place i welcome you to the warrior sanctum Many come here seeking to claim the might of the Blue Dragon Order as their own. If you seek, if you too seek our power, I will bestow upon you a trial. 
the Warrior's Sanctum. I guess this area is some sort of holy grounds for fighters. So yeah, if you want to progress through this part of the story, you're going to have to do these trials. These little uh, battles. It seems like I'll have to pass this trial and I want to be able to continue on. It seems you have made up your mind, young swordsman. Then prove that you have the strength and the resolve to wield the power of the blue dragons. Duels. This is pretty much what it is. Duel mode has been implemented. Some skills and items are restricted in duel mode to ensure fair and exciting battles. A new duel mode palette set is now available for configuration. Duel palette. Set a duel mode palette for a, from a set palette. From a set palette duel in the main menu. I thought I read that wrong. You can now use your primary palette for the duel mode. Additionally, some skills have been adjusted for enemy duel mode play. You can check the effects of skills in duel mode by reading the help text. Examine your palette and skills in duel mode and a dual palette mode for set details. So in other words, hey, you so your main palette is, you know, what you run around in the main game with, you know, whatever, whatever. It's set up you set that up the dual palette is what you walk into like hey this is what i want also this palette dual palette set can be viewed i don't even know what the fuck i just did this battle will be fought in dual mode so the party will temporarily dissolve no need I'm, i already know how a duel works so yeah this is kind of why i wanted dual wielding for this because there's a skill in dual wielding called Nightmare Rain. And it and like if your opponent tries to parry and you use Same dual rain, it cuts through their uh it legit cuts through their parry. Dual mode basics. The screen layout changes during dual mode. Basic controls are the same, except the main palette is unusable. The HP and stats are shown at the top of the left hand screen. Your opponent's HP and stats are shown in the top right. Reduce your opponent's HP to zero within the time limit allotted to win. Blowback. A new blowback effect has been added to the sword skills and monster attacks in dual mode. Slashing attacks and sword skills may now knock lightweight enemies back. Guard recovery. Guard. Uh, All right, we're back. All right, so anyways, back to what I was saying. Guarding while hit by a blowback allows you to perform a guard recovery, letting you recover quickly at the cost of SP, literally a hundred. Wall hit and knockdown. Dual mode maps are surrounded by a special wall. Being knocked to two one of them will cause a stunning wall hit effect. Being attacked while wall hit causes this hold up. Being attacked while wall hit causes a special wall knockdown effect. You'll be immune to damage but cannot take action. <coughs> quickly pressing the action button and moving the left stick under this effect will allow you to recover quickly. Did not know that. Staggering PvP duels. Jesus. We're gonna do this one duel and then end the video. Landing a sword skill attack following the guard break or even after successfully blocking a sword skill will stagger your opponent. Or if your opponent does a sword skill and you dodge it into a sword skill right after, that's even better, because that's easier. <laughs> this this will call weak to a P <clears throat> this will call this will cause weak or you know stun to appear. Attacks on weak enemies deal additional damage. That's it? Okay, that's it, good. So yeah, it's literally like a regular fight except in a duel. Okay. Don't go nowhere. So yeah, he just got the wall hit. So yeah, duel mode is pretty cool. Duel mode is pretty cool, especially this one is pretty cool, and it's really rewarding to see like when your timing pays off, so like you can like stagger your opponent. Yeah, no. All right. Oh, we still got Nova Ascension. Oh yeah, he's dead. And we got a perfect of all things. Perfect. Uh, 
All right. Stop was not that bad. Dual stats. Player stats and equipment performance will be reduced to some degree to ensure fair, fair fights in duo mode. Oh yeah, I can, that I can definitely see. Because I, I have made myself beyond overpowered on here. Use the same button comedy. Use the same button combination you use during normal play to open a window displaying your changes in performance. In PvP mode and not been added to dual mode. How to play dual mode? I know how dual mode works. A PvP mode has been a PvP mode has been added to dual mode. Play dual mode by selecting it from the multiplayer menu on the title screen. Lobby screen. Okay. Uh all right. From there you may set the rules and wait for your opponent. Press the square button while the lobby screen to view your dual stats. Press triangle while on the lobby screen to toggle between int international and domestic matchmaking. Once you have an opponent, you will be transported to a special field. A brief announcement will then kick off the duel. Ranked battles. Alright. In rank, in rank battle mode, players can put their rank points on the line and fight against other players. Winning matches are in rank. Winning matches earn rank points, but losing matches also loses your rank points. You also lose rank points if your internet connection is interrupted during the rank battle. Ranked battle rewards. Collecting rank points allows you to, sing, to slightly enhance your character in the regular game. The effects of the rank buffs earned in the current, in the current battle are displayed in the window, in the results window. Free battles. Jesus. Select free battles from the lobby screen to enter a battle that will not affect your current ranking. You also have more control over how your opponent is selected for free battle. Quick match searches for an opponent without specifically without specifying any criteria. Wait for an opponent allows you to wait for an opponent who meets the criteria you have selected. Alright. Search for an opponent. Search for opponents allows you to choose for an opponent from a list of players who meet your specific criteria. Rematches. Oh my fucking god. Okay, I'm skipping that because that was just not necessary. <laughs> like, basically, if you ever played a game where you could go against somebody else, it's literally that. Take this as proof of your deed here today. Now go. Seek the next trial. Hey, I've been thinking, this quest difficulty was supposed to be auto-tuned to be appropriate for most players, right? Is it just me, or isn't it or isn't it a little bit too hard for that to be the case? It's not just you. The monsters up here are definitely stronger than those down in Iron Ground. I guess Iron Ground is supposed to be the high-level area, huh? Well, I don't mind. That just makes the game more fun. Hmm. Maybe Cardinal purposely made Iron Crad this hard to give people something that they could they get a lot of mileage out of. Well, either way, we did just beat the third trial. Let's find the next one. The third one? Oh, I was off. Yeah. Okay, well, I did this out of order. Alright, we're being watched from the shadows anyways. Let's pick this up and see what it is. Alright, Sapphire Lind... I'm not even gonna try. Lind... Lindworn... whatever. Alright, it's actually pretty good. Alright, uh, compared to what I got, because I'm... of course I'm rocking this. Uh, is it better? Probably not. I mean, it increases my defense and my vitality, but I lose a thousand health. And I lose all them stats. So nah, I'm actually good. I'm gonna keep what I got on. Anyways, I'm gonna end the video right here once I actually activate this. So yeah, I'm gonna end the video right here. Uh, because this video has ran on for too long and I still don't have dual wielding. This is some BS. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, why don't you go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And with that being said, this is TRD Play signing out saying peace. 
and I will see you all in the next one. Dostavenia.